mental thing. So even before, let's say again, situation runner, second base, even before the ball is hit, okay, what are a couple of uh, mental cues that can help you make the right call? Go ahead, the speed of the runner. Oh, there you go. There you go, Matthew. The speed of the runner. Absolutely. Right? The speed of the runner. That is such an important factor that we don't think about sometimes because if that guy's a burner and we get something soft through the infield or something that's, even if it's four or five strides off from our outfielders, he's going to score, right? He's going to score. Does the speed of the, of the runner, does it, does it matter if there's a runner at third base, nobody else on, sacrifice fly situation? Why does that matter? Where's the only possible play we can get now? Oh, right? So that's kind of one of the situations where it kind of doesn't matter. What else? What's the second thing? Who's helping you make this play? George, you got the answer? The arm of the outfield. The arm of the outfield. Even beyond that, that boy George, even beyond the arm of the outfield. Okay, just think, who is your outfielder? Who are your outfielders? Because are all outf do all outfielders have the same arm strength? Do they all have the <laughs> do they all have the same foot speed? No, right? So knowing who your outfielders are will also help you with making that decision. Because if this guy is slow, as slow as I was, and the ball is kind of hidden, maybe a little off to his right, you're probably not going to have a, a play here, especially if that runner is fast, right? So his arm and his foot speed. Okay, if he's got a cannon and this guy's turning third, you still think you got a shot, then you go for it. But what's 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 one of the other important, probably the third and the other important aspect to help you make a play here is gonna be the score of the game. Okay, because there's a big difference, isn't there? If it's the fifth inning and you're up six to zero, how important is it for you to make this play? No. What's probably more important than making this play? The trail runner, right? The hitter. Can we keep him to stay at first base? Okay, because again, like myself, I thought every play was coming four, 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 four. We didn't have a play here. I'd come out, I'd knock it down, and that guy's going an extra 90 feet. And now guess what? Now he's in scoring position. Now a base hit or an error, boom, he could come in to score. AJ. When we're able to keep okay, our runner at first base, what does it do for our defense besides let him get into scoring position? What does it do? It sets up a double play, right? And what else beyond the double play does it set up? What if we have an infielder that dives through the ball and we're not going to be able to turn two? What do we have open? How about a force play, right? Force play still cuts runners from going two bases. Does that make sense? So you got viable options at that point if we can save the runner from taking the extra base. Kind of young. I wish I had a coach talking to me about the middle side because I thought every ball that was hit to the outfield with a runner on second, I thought every single ball was four, four, four. I thought we had a play. And I didn't realize that not every time this situation comes up, not every single time do we have to get it out here. So a lot of times myself and my teams, we gave innings away because we were letting guys run to second base. You guys, you guys understand that trail runner, how important that is. The better you get at the mental part of this game, the more confidence you're going to infuse into your defense. Guess what that does for your defense? Guess what that does for your defense? Right? They know you got to play. They know when you say 4-4-4, four, 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 and they can feel it, and they can throw it, they know you have a play here. Okay, so the communication and how you assert yourself as a leader, super, super important. The more you can think about these things here, the more efficient you'll be with your calls and the more those guys are going to rely on you. You guys understand that? Okay, let's go get dressed. Let's get all our gear on. We just talked about some of the mental side. Now we're going to talk more about the physical and the, and the, and the technique of it. All right? You guys, you guys are well aware that we want to start out in front, right? Why do we want to start out in front? We're going to work back. What's another reason? Yeah, the runner, the runner believes he's got a sliding lane back here. We're inviting him. We're giving him the invitation. This is your lane, okay? And we are going to work back. So what's our is at the beginning, our left foot is basically going to take us to where the ball's going. If it's a throw, for, if it's a throw that's off to our right, 
When we hit here, our right foot typically takes us back a drop, and then that third stride gets us back across the plate. You're gonna hear me say, get across the plate. That doesn't mean get across into the batter's box. It means get across so that you can finish in a position to where you're not giving up that open lane inside it where it's easy for him to slide through you or he's, you're not giving him too much of the outside for an open hook slide. So when I say get across the plate, I mean get to a good tag position. So the first few that we're hitting at you, I want you to hold. Catch, hold, don't just roll out of there. I want you to hold, I want you to check. Where's my position? Okay, reminder, a good tag position, I should have my heel somewhere out in front of the plate right there, my toe pointing towards third base. Typically, he's gonna be running right in this lane. If he slides and slides hard, he takes me out down low, where am I gonna fall? How am I gonna fall? I'm gonna fall over and in front of him. If I get down here, I kind of pin myself a little bit to where if he kind of pops up and I fold back and over, I'm pinned underneath back here. That's where some injuries can happen, whether it's the knee or the ankle. Okay, so this strong position on my feet is important. The biggest thing I see from our catchers, especially our new ones, is that they want to go back, and I've seen others do this sometimes, right? I see you guys go to the tag and you go down to a knee. Anytime you go down to a knee, this replaces your foot, right? So now your weight's here, and you tend to be light back here, but you can get pinned back there. When you get your feet on the ground, now your feet can slide, they can move, you can spin and rotate, which we'll talk about in terms of finishing the play, but you have a lot more freedom you know, on a ball that, that you know, has some variation. It's not always gonna be a ball that's right at you, okay? So use this freedom. Try not to get yourself stuck. I did this one time, that hurt, okay? I did, I came across the game, I did this one time, I came across too far, right? Folded my ankle, my knee's not, your knee's not meant to go that way, okay? It's not meant to go this way, and it's not meant to go that way, or this way. So this is a great position right now to take on a hard slide, to take on a hook slide, and to keep him from getting inside right there. Does that make sense? All right. So we'll start off out in front. Four, four, four! We're going to anticipate everything's like a relay call, right, or, or, or a well-thrown ball. And then now we're going to read. We're going to read it. First step, all right, is directionally. Second step is going to be to drop and then third steps to get across the plate. All right, one thing that we had to add and talk about um, with our younger guys is a ball that takes you kind of up the line. All right, we saw a lot of guys. You're starting out in front, you're inviting the slide, and our guys were going left, right, left, and they're coming straight across. Even if this guy is not trying to run you over, which we know hitters can't do anymore, or runners can't do anymore, it's still gonna, it's gonna jam him up in terms of what, what's he gonna do? He's got nowhere to go. He thinks he's sliding hard. And so we wanna avoid those situations. We wanna still go left, right, left. We wanna try and stay in fair territory if we can, right? Sometimes he's gonna, it's gonna make him go around further. It's gonna, you know, what if, what if he sees you do this, he tries to go around and he completely misses the plate. All right, you're here, you can just follow him and maybe get him on the back end of a foot or something like that. Okay, I'm out in front of half a step. Four, four, four! Four, four! Boom. Right there. Check yourself. What's that stance look like in case he goes wide? Okay, in case he comes straight in. Let's go again. Four, four, four! Four, four! Will it work? Left, right, left. How do we look right there? I want you guys to check yourself. Four, four, four! Boom. Check yourself. I have done this so many times so many reps that I can kind of take out of position and still get to a good spot, okay? I can go up the line and still get to a good spot. Switch, Brian, you and me, let's switch. Four, four! Come on, come on. Oh, nice try. Look, I really like that. You guys see that? 
it kind of took him up. He came up the line and he got it and it was as fast as he could. We were by him, but it was bang bang. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the whole thing into play. We got we gotta consider the backside runner. So you're gonna go through your footwork. If you gotta play, you gotta play. If this guy comes early, then we're not, we may not even get to this position. We may just come out and go two, two, two. All right? We'll get across, we'll throw the sliding dummy in. We have another play to make. I want you guys to get up and expect that next play. Now, if it's 